Hello and welcome back to Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. So this should be the very last episode of Custom Courtiers. If your Custom Courtier has not been added in the series, but you have left me a comment before the episode where I said no more Custom Courtiers, then leave me another comment underneath this one. We'll see what we can do uh, and we will add them in in about a week. Anyway, so we have the last batch. So let's have a look at them. We have Zando Forrester, who, um, he's a Forrester bastard from the Summer Isles, who, um, has come to Harlow Hill, kind of seeking out his heritage. He wants to know what his, uh, you know, he wants to know what his ancestors were like, and they spent a lot of their time here in, well, Harlow. We also have Alice and Ormond. Alice was a wildling woman up above the wall, as wildlings tend to be, and they were... Uh, they had villages. Yeah, we're getting a little bit too close to the wall for the Night's Watch's uh, for the Night's Watch's comfort. So they went out and cleared it very violently, and her entire village was wiped out. She then escaped somehow and snuck past the wall to Molestown, where she met Man and she married him. However, he was too fond of the brothel, so um, he is now dead, and she has ran off here. We also have um, Alphonse Piera and uh, Sheer Seaster. Now Alphonse is a cousin. I think I'm. I think he's a cousin um, of Nun Alvarez over there. And basically, he um, he was he had grayscale and he went off to Valeria to travel. He he was going away. He didn't have much. He didn't think he had long to live, so he left. He went away. However. He heard stories. He heard stories of Nun Alvarez and his dragon, and he came. He he wanted to. Uh, he wanted to get uh, somebody for him to marry. Someone of Valyrian blood. Somebody who, you know, their children would be able to control the dragons. It would be a fantastic lineage. The family line would continue. It would all be great. However, by the time he got here, the last known place that he'd heard of of uh, Nun Alvarez, um. He'd found that he'd actually gone and become Hand of the King off in, uh, like, off in, I've completely forgotten, in the Westlands, I think? Um, yes. I think it's the Westlands. Anyway, it might be Iron Owls. We'll find out. We'll do that in a second. But yes, he found that out, and, uh, he decided that actually, he would marry the bride. And that is what's happened. He has married Shira Seastar, the bride he brought. Because Nun Alvarez had married and had children and it was past that point in his life. So now it is time for Shira to be around and she has her own dragon egg. So there is potential for another dragon rider arriving here. And we also have Roderick Cravens, who was a sellsword in the north, who was a little bit too fond of um, the ladies. And his employer, one of the lords up there, caught him with, it, with the, uh, his wife. And then Roderick's uh, company was ambushed by uh, what is officially bandits, but most people know were the Lord's men, and the company was destroyed. Roderick, completely uh, devastated by this, wandered the land, going a little bit mad inside his own head, and he has ended up here. Now let's go answer my question about Nun Alvarez, who is back here somewhere. There we go. Wow, he's really high up the character's special interest. He must have been added ages ago. Okay. There we go. Nun Alvarez is Master of Coin of the Iron Isles. Now, he was Hand of the King. He's now Master of Coin. Oh, well. Um, I guess that he was better suited to that position. So, let's just kind of continue doing what we were doing. We were, I believe, just waiting for events at this point. Ah, my steward informs me my concubine, Roga, is with child. Perfect. Fantastic. Um... Now, we're not allowed to raid, are we? How would I even find that out? I've forgotten where you find out these things. Oh, cool. Uh, we could change the law in Republic to be uh, different types of Republic things. Okay. Magisterial elective. This is the traditional election se uh, system of the Republic where Lord Magisters are elected. Triarch for life. Uh, Triarch has ruled long enough they can try and make themselves Triarch for life and avoid the inconvenience of yearly elections. Um... I don't think we get that anyway. Um, okay. But yeah. We would have to have government type triarchy. Establish a monarchy. Uh, we'd have to have a lot of prestige, rule for 15 years, and have a lot of diplomacy. 
or be a dragon rider. Okay, but we could potentially... Right. Okay, so there's potential for switching back to monarchy. An alliance member. Uh, we would have to be part of the free cities, which we're not. Okay, cool. Well, we'll just leave that. Uh, Queen Layla of Westeros has learned Queen Layla's liberation of Pentos on Magister Bran the Just. So Pentos could potentially become part of Westeros, which would be pretty a pretty big deal. Um, especially as that would give them the Westlands and Pentos. Um, now, how many men do Pentos have? They have 22,000 and Westeros has 29,000. Ooh. With the backup of the Westlands with 32,000. They should be able to win this war. Uh, Pentos shouldn't have any alliances either. No, no alliances. Yeah, that's that's a good potential uh, war there. Travelers bring rumors of fire and blood. They say Danel has escaped from the dungeons of Sierra Sunblast and has built a lair in Dragonstone. Oh, and Sierra Sunblast um, was slain by Darnell. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, that's awful. Westeros is back underneath. Westlands are back underneath Westeros. Excuse me, what's happening here? Are you still at war? You are still at war. Okay. I don't know why you would be back underneath. That's a bit weird. Oh well. During a particularly heated argument in the council, Sir Ian stepped in as you were about to make a fool of yourself. He was able to argue for your point, not only saving your face, but also winning the argument for you. It is obvious that Ian's smooth talking was the sole reason for your success, and denying the fact would likely paint you in a good light. Uh, in a bad light. Sorry. Uh, thank you. I... True, I do truly owe you in return. Okay, so we'd owe him a favor. Or bad, I would have won the argument by myself. Um, well, we're honorable. We'd probably owe him a favor. Um, we're, we're greedy, but I, I, I kind of seen that in a money sense. Less than in a uh, general sense of not wanting to give out favors. Anyway, we'll see. We've given him a favor. We'll see what he does with it. We do have a couple favors of our own. We have uh, Sir Harlan of Bull's Head. And Gisela. I suppose if we have Sir Harlan of Bull's Head, the Hand of the King of the Iron Isles, we should probably see what we can do about it. There should be some laws we could potentially change here. Like, um, let's have a look at the Count, my Liege's Council. So, we, what, what's our current vote on here? Uh, we are on the council, right? Yes, we're a chief general. We're currently a pragmatist. We could change that. We could become loyalists or malcontents or whatever. Um... But yes, we could potentially call in a favor on um, Seneschal Harlan to vote our way on a certain subject if we wanted to. So not everyone's just going to vote with the person. We've got a couple of people who are going to be pragmatists. Uh, oppose the creation of other strong vassals in the realm. Support the revoking of titles from already powerful vassals. Zealots want kind of religious things and glory hounds want glory. Okay. And they prefer centralized realm. Okay. Let's see if there's anything we want to do. Hmm. Maybe push for something like justice to try and make it so that that's a council member thing. Or offices and titles are council member things. Something like that would be pretty cool. Um. I, that could definitely be interesting. Um. I don't know if there's anything we necessarily want to do though. We'll just leave it just now. I just thought it was worth looking at. Lord Paramount Jason of the Westlands has created the High Lord of Cornfield. Oh, okay. Well, we'll keep just gaining our money up, uh, seeing what we can do. Is there any factions we can create our, against our liege out of interest? Uh, elective succession in the Iron Isles? That eh, could be interesting. Not necessarily anything that we want to do. Uh, factions in the free cities of the Iron Isles. There's Lord Manfred for the uh, Iron Isles, which isn't really something that we should be worried about. Independence? Not something necessarily I want. We could do overthrow the monarchy again. Uh, how many men do our liege have? Or does our liege have? He has 14,000. And we currently have 4,000. But, very importantly, we're also allied with these guys. With uh, Hagen, aren't we? Yes, we're, we're allied with Hagen. And we also have um, dragons. And we can hire men. Because we have a lot more money than our liege, I think. Yes, we have significant significantly more money than our leash. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we don't really want to depose them either. I think we might want to try pushing for ourselves to be on the Iron Isles. I think we have the capability. See how many men we could get mercenaries, right? 
We could definitely afford this. We could afford this war, and it's well within our budget, and it gets us a lot of stuff. Um, like, this is still underneath, yeah, it's still underneath the Iron Isles. That is the problem. The Veil is actually a problem. It's got 26,000 men. But I think if we were to very quickly get to the Iron Isles itself, we would be able to win this. Um, we also hate Roland. We hate our liege intensely. Because he's wrong government type. He didn't give us our land. We desire things. You know what? This sounds perfect. Um, now we just need to try and push for it. Is there anything we can do over here? Like, actually, he is seven. I don't know if he'll actually be able to join the war or whether those men ultimately go to the Lannisters. Hmm. Now, I'm going to try and push for it. I'm going to try and push for overthrow the monarchy. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if we can get anyone else to join as well. That'd be a good idea. We got some more money. Um, oh, yes. We also have all these people, um, all these Rylor followers. I think we're just going to let them go. I mean, we tried to ransom them, so and they didn't accept it. Right, there we go. Can I push people, anyone else, into the faction? Is there anything I want to do? We could pot potentially buy some favors. Like, could we, we can't buy a favor with you, can we? But with your regent, we could buy a favor of your regent, although he has conflicting interest right now. Is there anyone else we want in this war? Uh, maybe somebody underneath the veil here. Uh, I have to do that to go underneath. Like the North Weld. If, could I buy a favor of you? No. Okay. Um, I see you wouldn't even be able to join the factions. Who's directly underneath our liege? Um, that's not where I was looking. I want to go directly underneath our liege in the Realm Tree. Gerald Hagen, our uncle, then us. So we are the uh, se uh, second and third most. Can I buy him a, f a favor of him? I could, for 200 gold, I could push him into our uh, thing. That would definitely be an idea. Doesn't appear like anyone else is even interested, so you know what? We'll, we'll try, we'll, uh, we'll convince our uncle to join in here. Right. Um, he's considering a buy favor offer from us. He has accepted. We would like him to join our faction. Did he accept? He has joined our faction, so we now have a fairly strong faction that will fire. Um, no, let's just do it. Let's, let's demand uh, the monarchy go away. We've done it once, we'll do it again. Right. Your shameful attempt at blackmail has not succeeded. No matter how many corrupt souls you've enticed to help carry out your plan, I will not give in without a fight. I'd... Rather die defending what is rightfully mine. Signed, Iron King Roland of the Iron Isles. Okay. Now this is war. We have declared war to overthrow the monarchy of the Iron Isles on King Roland of the Iron Isles. Right, so. First things first. Let's check who's in here. So the Vale is in as a separate entity. Perfect. That's exactly what we want if they're going to be in this war. We need to raise up our own men. Which we will do get them all where they should be. Um, we're going to disband the people at Lannisport because that's where we're going to land before we move on to the next place. Uh, we should also... Actually, why don't we get all of our... Why don't we raise them up again? And then we will get all of our boats up. And that way we can just stick people on boats. There we go. There we go. There we go. Stick everybody on the boats. And stick the boats back in over here. Melinda is no longer our spy master. We need a new one. New spy master. Um, Shreel, our, our half sister, we quite like. Tor uh, Torgrim, no, we don't like him. Lythine Lydon, no. We'll, we'll go for our half sister. There we go. And she can scheme. Cool. Um, everybody stay on your boats. I say I want everybody to just go out into the uh, sea here. Uh, I don't want to control the army. Stay on the boats. There we are. Now we can merge together the armies. Perfect. We have 3,000 men and the rest are going to come up into this area as well. Perfect. Uh, now, where are the Lannister men? They're not yet here. So we're going to head down. 
How many was there capacity for people? Um, that'd be 16,000, I think. Yeah, so we can get a few more. We're going to go back to uh, Harlaw Hill here. Under my guidance, my young courtier, uh, Isambaro. is only mastery art of swordsmanship. Isambaro Mavery. Okay. Um, who is he? Oh, he's the son of Melinda Mavery, who just died. I see. Okay. Right. Um, how many more men do we want? Um, let's think about that. Okay, so let's see what we want to do here. We probably want to get a reasonable amount so that we can actually get the siege going. How much does it have? 5k. So, if we get maybe four of these armies, that should be absolutely fine. We can always get more, is the, end, is the thing here. We can't get less, though. And it saves us money if we go for this. Drowning. The waves crash over the gull... Um, whales and the ship heaves from side to side. The crew struggles desperately to tear down the sail. You stagger across the deck, trying to reach the safety of the cabin. Lightning strikes and all goes dark. When you next awaken, you're on the shore, spewing seawater from your lungs. With visions of the drowned god's hall dancing in your mind, you have drowned, but yet you live. Okay. So. We gain the trait drowned we divorce Asha of the Tower of the Glimmering. We lose Greedy, we lose Cynical, we become chaste, diligent, and zealous. Oh, this is perfect, actually. Because we are becoming zealous just as we are attacking against the Faith of the Seven. This is all coming together in one giant uh, plan by our drowned god. It's perfect. What is dead may never die, but rises again harder and stronger. Um, why does it say your brother? No, your brother, Lord. M so we were long thought dead. Our ship struck down by the storm of God whilst at sea. Yet here I am, striding through my own hall, and I have changed. I'm wearing a I'm wearing rough spun robes and carrying a driftwood cudgel. I say I was drowned, and yet the drowned God chose to spare me, and I will now devote my life to serving Him. What is dead may never die, but rises again harder and stronger. An enterprising captain and commander of one of the galleys has discovered several t new markets uh, along foreign shores. He reports that those distant ports are rife with opportunity for trade and profit. Rule number 62. The riskier the road, the greater the profit. And that is fantastic because... Well, I mean, it's not fantastic, but this is all... This is great. We're changed into a different kind of person. We're going... We're now diligent, honourable, all for the... Uh, glory of the drowned god i think it's time to change our business focus a little bit we're gonna go war we're now warring very much against the other religions right into lannisport you go mordain lannister is currently under my control and our close relative is currently opposing us uh, this is mordain pike who is the son who is the, the daughter of tom and lannister who's the daughter of who is the son of uh, Lord Lancel the Chase and all that line of people. Uh, we can say it's not our fault. We can. Who's our pair? Who is our other side parent? Jocelyn the Unfaithful. Jocelyn Brax. Okay. Um. Well, what does, faith does she follow? She follows the faith of the seven. Well, obviously, uh, bring me her head. Daisy Lannister is currently under my control. And a close relative is currently opposing us. We can rightfully execute her or imprison her um, as a warning to our enemies. Um, we're going to uh, say it's not her fault because um, she is a follower of the Drowned God. Okay, we absolutely destroy that army. Let's make sure we have Gale and Rala. And of course, we should have ourselves, assuming we're not wounded. We are wounded, so in that case, we will have... Bram, the captain of Sellsword Infantry. Or Hugo. Um, Hagen, perhaps? Um, Hagen definitely seems a little bit better. We'll go with Hagen. Okay. And now we will head to Casterly Rock. Which we should be able to siege. It's turning colder and colder. The people of Harlow Hill can no longer work the fields. Okay. And, oh, Lord Els of Case has usurps the lordship of Feral from Lord Rupert of the Golden Tooth. Okay. Interesting. And he has usurped the high lordship 
Wait, did I not just say that? Anyway, uh, the Presto has taken land from the Leffords. Your Excellency, my scheming in Harla Hill has borne fruit. I've discovered a plot where Orion Time seeks to kill Matara's Vassar. Your humble master of whispers, Shreel Serpentail. So our captain of the fleet seeks to kill Matara's Vassar. Matara's Vassar is who exactly? Um, so it's Orion, Orion. Um, really? I don't see this plot in the list of plots, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I could just be blind. Oh, there it is. So it's just him. It's not a lot of plot power. Mataris Vassar is a Valerian follower, so obviously I have no problem with this. And we'll now siege down Castle Rock. It's turning colder and colder. The people of uh, Serpentail can, of Stone Tree can no longer work the fields. Mm. Oh well. Uh, the Stormlander Civil War to increase Council Power has. Uh, excuse me, I was reading that. Um, has ended. Storm Queen Rowan of the Stormlands won, so Council Power was not increased in the Stormlands. Ghastly Rock should fall any moment now. Lord Thaddeus of Sarsfield has usurped the High Lordship of Sarsfield from Lord Lester of Sarsfield. Um, so that's the Garners are taking land from the Sarfields. Okay. Uh, that's good that um, our, what's it called, our ally in this war, our uncle, has decided to siege up the bits in the Iron Isles. And that means that it's unlikely they're going to come and siege our main provinces. Right, we'll keep going. A daughter was born to Mad uh, Lord Magister Vicon Ironheart and Roga named Morna. She is an imbecile child of a concubine and is sickly and died stillborn. It was a long and hard night, and in the end it seems for nothing. Little Morna never lived. Words fail me. One of my salt wives, uh, oh, this, this doesn't matter because she's disinherited. And she's dead. She's stillborn. I fear my courtier Isambaro is too cynical for his age. Hmm. Nothing the strap won't uh, cure. Um, well, of course, we are now zealous, so no cynicalness for you. Definitely. Let's uh, see what we can do about getting this province. We are, of course, unmarried. I don't believe we can marry because we're drowned, but I believe we can still have our salt wives. My beloved half-sister, Shereel, is still concerned she is not married. Um... No, we'll find her someone nice. Is there somebody nice? Who will marry our sister? Who is roughly the right age? Um... Anyone matrilineally want to marry her? Just because I like her as a spy master? I say no, nah, it doesn't make sense. We'll go non-matrilineal and we'll just search by age. Looking around the right age. Uh, Adal Benson. Definitely seems like a good choice. He's a bit craven. Uh, maybe not. Where's someone a little bit... Oh, we can't really go much older than that. Adal Benson it is then. You shall marry her. Yes. Cool. And we'll keep going. Oh, good. The defenders got destroyed in Castle Rock a little bit. Uh, they are now married. We need a new spy master. Um, obviously, it has to be someone of our faith. How about Shereel? Shereel is perfect. She is also zealous. She will fit in nicely. There we go. Um, perfect. We'll keep sieging this down. She's almost done. As this, uh, not too much each time. Uh, the non aggression pact uh, between. Tyrene Martell and Mathis Gardner has dissolved as Colin Gardner died after a period of illness. He was married to Princess Maria. Okay. Cool. Our siege is quick. We're done. Your Excellency, I'm pleased to report I've captured some high-value prisoners after a successful siege of Castle Rock. I hereby turn them over to you for your judgment. Yours humbly, Gale. Ah, perfect. Well, of course we'll assault our next one easy to do that. Now, do we know where he is himself? He is currently in Whitford. Where is Whitford? Whitford. Lordship of Whitford. Was oh, all the way up there? Why is he up there? Oh, he's in the War of the Night's Watch. Alright, so we have attacked while he was very, very much unprepared. Oh, well, perfect. We'll see this down a little bit more. Under my guidance, my courtier uh, is embarrassed, slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. He's now a trained fighter. 
Okay. Um, can I force him to... I mean, he's not technically our ward. I was wondering whether I could force him to not be uh, of Rylor, but I guess not. Kels Malster died of gonorrhea. She was previously married to King Stefan of Westeros. Okay. This should be almost done. This war isn't going quite as well as I thought it would. I lose more men per battle than I planned in the sieges. The sieges go on forever. More man per more siege weapons is what I need. Perhaps a friend could assist me with this. So we can ask our friend, Prince uh, Punaxaro of Ko, to help us with this. Yes, join our war. I mean, you are of a foreign religion, but join our war. Maybe this is more of a we're both zealous towards our own religion, but he, we recognize the uh, the theological kind of side of it. I don't know. We'll ask him. He'll probably say no. Be my guess. Dear Prince Kudanzaro, my duty... Uh, yeah, I should say, dear Magister Vicken, my duties to my family and my vassal just allows me to help you at this moment. I hope the war will turn in your favor and I wish for you to win the war quickly. With hopes of your understanding, your friend, Prince Punanzaro. I'll manage somehow. Yes. Keep going. Oh! These guys have become a little bit more independent. Okay. Chiefess Yasilla of Hardhome has declared Hardhome's war for Tormund's claim on the Haunted Forest and High Chief Duncan of the Haunted Forest. Okay. And we are almost getting through these defenders. Very quickly. And... We there yet? I'm, I'm, st I'm still like... Are we actually going to do it? I don't know. My young courtier has finished his education military strategy in command. It turned out less well than expected. He's an incompetent commander. And a different one, uh, Grolo Mavery, is a uh, incompetent steward. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, they were followers of Rylor. What can you expect? Right. Uh, where do we want to go now? Where, where, where is the Iron King? He is currently in King's Course, which is up here somewhere, I think. Yeah, there it is. It's in the center of that land. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, I am going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching, and next time we will hopefully uh, overthrow this monarchy. See you then. Goodbye.